Okay, I'd like to welcome everyone. And uh, so this morning's session, I'm going to start with this slide. And this slide is the uh, uh, shows the Hubble uh, deep view of the space. And this is just a patch of the sky. And this is about uh, 10 billion light years. That's the distance of these galaxies. So that means that the light that started in these uh, galaxies started um, 10 billion years ago. And now we just see it now. So it takes 10 billion years for the light to get from these galaxies to us. As you see, now these, this one, for example, is a galaxy, this is a galaxy, and these are galaxies like ours. Uh, Milky Way is our galaxy, and it's 100,000 light years across. So that again, that means that it takes uh, 100,000 years for the light to go from one, one end of the galaxy to the other end. Uh, we can't even imagine this, but, but look, look how small they look, this patch, this patch of the sky. And this is just one corner of the sky. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. So, uh, this is the opening statement of the Quran, uh, and the meaning of it is, uh, in the name of God, the all-gracious, the all-merciful. So that's how the Quran starts. Uh, ultimate math mathematics, generator of the scripture, uh, so I'm going to give a visual presentation how this mathematics actually generates the Quran and the parameters of the Quran. And, uh, and we'll see it, and this is our website here, godalone.org. And really the fundamentals of this mathematics is, is so complicated that, that uh, we really don't know how to, how to approach the mathematics. However, uh, we see, we see uh, sort of a visual effects of this of these numbers that I'm going to present, and that visual effect of the numbers uh, is what we can actually see, and, and what we can it's a tangible way of, of looking at the Quran, and then and then we'll see how this whole thing uh, has been has been generated and compiled. Uh, okay, uh, I've written a book called Ultimate Mathematics. And the introduction of it uh, actually uh, uh, starts with the, with the quotation from Johannes Kepler. And, uh, and he was the one who actually came up with the idea of the planetary motion, Kepler's law. And uh, the chief aim of all investigation of the external world should be to discover the rational order and harmony which has been imposed on it by God and which he has revealed to us in the language of mathematics. So this man recognized that the entire universe is, is working based on mathematics. And, and he understood that that's, that's the language that God speaks with mankind. And so this is 1571, 1630. So that's a long time ago, huh? All right. So, ultimate mathematics. So this is, this is, this is an outline of my talk. Uh, I'm going to have an introduction. And then I'm going to talk about primes, composites, twin primes, twin prime companions, Mersenne primes, Gaussian primes, semi-primes, and then indices. Okay. So this is, this is really the first time that we are looking at primes, not only at primes, but they're also look, look at the indices. That means the position of these primes in ascending order. Okay and what those relations are and how they actually generate the Quran. So we're going to talk about group structures, how the group structures actually relate to these problems. And then number bases, again, how number bases connect to these problems, and to the primes, and so on. Then the second lecture, lecture after the intermission, I'm going to say and describe how these mathematics that we are discussing here is going to generate the scripture, which is the Quran. Okay, so prime numbers are numbers that are divisible by themselves and one only. Okay, so you cannot, you cannot, you cannot divide it by anything else. It's just by itself and one. So that's the definition of a prime number. So by this definition, one is not a prime number. Okay. So the first prime number is two. So it is a formal mathematical challenge to determine if a, a number is prime. That's by itself, okay? So many algorithms have been developed to find new prime numbers. So it's a huge challenge. No exact theory exists linked
linking primes to the positional rank of the index. For example, no one knows what the 1143rd prime is without working his or her way up to the, from the first prime to the 1143rd prime. So that's what you have to do. So if I ask anybody, okay, what is 1143rd prime? Nobody knows. So you have to write a program, okay? And then you write that program and, and, and tabulate all of these and then you say, uh-huh, well, when I get to 1143, then I'll look across and see what that prime number is. So understanding prime would lead to appreciation of complexity of composites, joint primes, lonely primes, factorization of semi-primes and other number theory problems. Prime numbers, okay? So let's continue. Therefore, first we have to establish if a number is prime or not. That's, that's the first order of business, okay? Forget about indices. First we have to do that. So I'm going, to, I'm going to take a very small number, 2747, which is a very small number. It's not a big number. And so let us see if this, this is prime or not. What we'll see, it's, it's, not, it's not an even number. So it cannot be divisible by 2. Okay, so we'll reject that. Then we go to the next one and see if it's divisible by 3. So a number is divisible by 3 if the sum of uh, its digits is divisible by 3. So we add them up. 2 plus 7 plus 4 plus 7 is 20. 20 is not divisible by 3, so it's not divisible by 3. So, so that's ruled out. So we keep trying. We go to the next problem, which is 5, 7, 11, and so on. Okay? So we, we do this until we get to 41. So you see, you have to do some work here to get to 41, because 41 is the 13th prime. So you have to divide them by 12 primes previous to this one, previous to 41, below 41, and then all of a sudden we see, uh -huh, it's divisible by 41. So this number is actually 41 times 67. Okay? Then you say, uh huh, it's not a prime. But you had to do a lot of work. Now imagine if this number was bigger. Or you had a lot of them that you wanted to do this one. <clears throat> okay. So now the next question is are there infinitely many primes? So these are the mathematicians usually ask these questions. Okay. Are there, can you prove that? And this proof actually was done, look, look at the date there, 325 to 365 BC, okay? So you're talking about 23, 2400 years ago, okay? So it says, so this was due to Euclid and proved by contradiction that there are indeed infinitely many primes. And assume that you know the largest prime P, then we can form a composite C such that C is equal to two times three, all of the primes before that P, Okay, the multiplication of all of those. Then we add one to it. Okay, that's how the proof goes. Then we add one to it. So C plus one is either a prime or not. If it is a prime, then it's obviously it's larger than P. So you can find always a number larger than P if this is a prime. If it is not a prime, then it cannot be divisible by any of these primes because we added one to it already. Okay? This is a beautiful proof, okay? So again, that number has to be larger than P. So that's, that's, that's how the proof goes. So prime index relation. So what is, the, what is the relation between prime and its index or positional rank? Okay, as I said, 1143, for example. What is the 1143? So Gauss's prime number theorem relates a prime to its index through the following relation. I is equal to P divided by log of P. And the symbol LN denotes the natural logarithm. And the above theorem was proven in the late 20th century. Uh, and so the above relation actually links the index to its corresponding prime in an asymptotic manner. It's just an approximation. Okay? And the index of the prime approaches the actual values as they tend to infinity. So it's asymptotic. It's not, it's not a one-to-one -one relation. So again, I want to emphasize here that there is no known relation, that unique relation that actually connects a prime to its index or positional rank. All right, so now we'll go to this. I'm going to tabulate some of these primes, okay? And so I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, okay, 2, 3, 17. 8 is 19, 9 is 23, uh, 19 is 67, and a half. We get to 1143, and we see it's 9, 2, 2, 1, okay? So we have to write a program to do this. Without that, we can't do it. And 1187 is 9619. <clears throat>